This is the video for Sunday, July 4th, 2021. And again, it is a compilation. We have the Zoom worship from last week for our prayers and for our fellowship. And then for this week, we have a new reading and sermon. Also, as it's the holiday, we're beginning with a reading from Frederick Douglass and then a poem by Langston Hughes. I hope you enjoy it. These excerpts are, are from a speech by Frederick Douglass in observance of Independence Day, 1852, 13 years before the end of slavery. Douglass himself escaped enslavement in Baltimore 14 years before. He became an international spokesperson for the abolition of slavery. This celebration marks the beginning of another year of, of your national life and reminds you that the Republic of America is now 76 years old. Fellow citizens, pardon me. Allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of, po of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? The blessing in which you, this day, rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence, bequeathed by your fathers, is shared, is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. Do you mean citizens to mock me by asking me to speak, to speak today? What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all, more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. There's not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. <clears throat> For black men, there are neither law, justice, humanity, nor religion. His own testimony is nothing. He can bring no witnesses for himself. The minister of American justice is bound by the law to hear but one side. A warship that can be conducted by persons who refuse to give shelter to the home, to the houseless, to give bread to the hungry, clothing to the naked, and to enjoin obedience to a law forbidding these acts of mercy is a curse, not a blessing to mankind. You declare before the world that you hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these, our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And yet you hold securely in a bondage a seventh part of inhabitants of your country. The, ex the existence of slavery in this country brands your republicanism as a sham, you your humanity as a base pretense, and your Christianity as a lie. Douglas concluded by affirming that he had hope for America Quote, while drawing encouragement from the Declaration of Independence, the great principles it contains, and the genius of American institution. Let America be America again.
by Langston Hughes. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. I am the poor white pulled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery's scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean, hungry yet today despite the dream, beaten yet today, O oh pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned. That's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas. I searched of what I meant to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lea. And torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland of the free. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Oh yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we the people must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains and the endless plain, all all stretch of the great of these great green states and make America again.
You doing all right? You look great. And is it getting better? Yes, I do feel better. Perfect. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Pastor. How are you doing? Oh, we're trying to keep cool. Morning, everyone. Hey, morning, Russ. Russ. How are you? Hi, Hi Wendy. Hi, Missy. Good morning. Hi, can you see me? Yes. You do? Yeah. Good morning, Good morning Russell. Good morning, Mom. There you are, Anita. <laughs> good, 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 good. good morning, Anita. Hi, Linda. Are you hosting today? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm cheating in here. <laughs> <laughs> Anita, you could do it. You learned how to knit. You learned how to knit. <laughs> Good morning, oh, okay, leave it out. All right, give me a call. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna try. I can send a card quicker than I can call, you know. Well, I can call quicker than I can send a card. <laughs> You, um, are you going to do a reading for us today? I am. Um, will it echo too much? or It might echo a little bit. I'm still working on that, but I think it'll sound okay to the people in the church anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. If people are overwhelmed by the echo on Zoom, they can maybe turn their volume down a little bit. Okay. Good morning, Russ. Good morning, Pastor. How are you? Good. Good morning, John. Good morning, Cecilia. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, Kareen. Good morning. I'm going to mute everybody now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those who are dealing with the heat here. Good morning to all the air-conditioned people in Zoom land. Yesterday in uh, Port Chester at All Souls Church, they had a memorial service for Reverend Bruce Baker. Um, some wonderful, wonderful testimony about what a wonderful pastor he was, what a wonderful father he was, what a wonderful husband. And uh, so we continue to keep his family in our prayers. Uh, today at two o'clock, they're going to be installing a new pastor at um, Emmanuel Church in Pleasantville. And so uh, keep uh, Pastor Kevin O'Hara in your prayers. I don't know how someone with the name like O'Hara got to be a Lutheran pastor, but that's another story, I guess, right? So uh, keep Pastor Kevin, uh, whose husband's name is also Kevin, uh, in your prayers as they begin a new ministry and for the congregation, the people of Emmanuel. And we're going to begin now with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. If you are able to stand, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in mercy, has given his Son to die for us. For his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a consecrated minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore, therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we are at part six of a ten-week series called Grace Upon Grace, the prayer of the day. Loving God, you set us free and gave us laws to protect our freedom. From your hand we have a life of fullness, where we have all received grace upon grace. In your commandments you guide us, in steadfast love you forgive us. Nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Amen. From the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. The first five books of the Bible are known in Hebrew as the Torah, a word which can be variously translated as law or teaching. We read about the Ten Commandments in two parts of the Torah, in Exodus and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy means the second law. The commandments are no less for us than they were for the ancient Hebrews. God's covenant God's covenant is extended to all of us here alive today. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances that I am addressing to you today. You shall learn them and observe them diligently. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Oreb. Not with our ancestors did God make this covenant, but with us who are all of us here alive today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain, out of the fire. 
At that time I was standing between the Lord and you to declare to you the words of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And God said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods but me. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to Jesus, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart, and with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask Jesus any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There's lots of lawn signs around these days. Lots of political messages that are being sent around. There's no election coming up, but these are very polemical times, and there's always lots of what some people call culture war debates going on. At the end of my block, there's a lawn sign that says, Do You Love Freedom? And it has a web page to go to. It's somethingpatriots.org. So that question, again, gives us kind of an American understanding of forgiveness, which I want us to look at in contrast to the biblical understanding of freedom. Do you love your freedom? Do you love your freedom? I want to know, do you love my freedom? Do I love your freedom? Do we as Americans love freedom for all? Or do we just care about my freedom? We think of freedom as, I don't want to wear a mask. We think of freedom as, I want to play my music as loud as I want. We think of freedom as doing whatever we want, without anyone restricting us, without anyone telling us what we can and cannot do. That's the way Americans think of freedom. That's not the way freedom was con conceived of by our framers. And it is certainly not the way freedom is understood in the Bible. It has evolved into a really individualistic notion of what I want and what I need to be happy. Is loving freedom just loving ourselves, loving our own appetites and indulgences? Is that what freedom is, just loving ourselves and loving our own freedom? Is that the way we think of freedom today? We should, of course, love ourselves, but not just ourselves. Jesus quotes from the scripture, his scripture, the Torah, from the book of Deuteronomy. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love. Jesus wants us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That means we must be loving ourselves. If we love God with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, we're loving. That has to come from someplace. We have to have that love inside of us. We need to love ourselves. But we can't just love ourselves. We need to love freedom, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. We can't be a nation based on freedom for each of us to take and have our own freedom. 
We can only be a nation that loves freedom for all, that everyone's freedom is respected. Not just me having the freedom to do whatever I want, but others to have freedom. When we read in the Bible about commandments, we hear that our freedom is being taken away. Laws, commandments are telling me what I can and what I can't do, what I have to do. That's the way we hear commandments. But in reality, as we read this today, what we hear in these commandments is, I brought you out of slavery. I am your God. You shall have no other gods but me, because I will be your God. That's what the commandments are about. It's about walking with God. It's about a relationship with God. These are not a list of things to do or not to do. They are a covenant. A covenant is a relationship. God has a relationship with us, giving us freedom, protecting our freedom, helping us to understand how to best use our freedom and to keep our freedom. This is a 10-part series. It's based on this book, Grace in a Tree Stump by J. Ellsworth Callis. Uh, this was um, inspired by Pastor Jen Boyd up in Trinity Brewster. Uh, I've modified it slightly. Um, but here's one part of this book that I thought was pretty good. Talking about how we see the Ten Commandments in contrast to how the Bible presents them. So it is that these commandments are all together to our benefit. We want a world where no one kills, where vows of marriage and of daily friendship are never violated, where all doors can be left unlocked, where no one lies to us or about us, indeed, where no one casts aspersions that can be as damaging as lies. We wish for a world where our neighbors rejoice in our good fortune, not envy us and covet what we have. We wish for a world where no one bows down to the images of our own making, the stuff urged upon us daily by the mills of advertising and public relations. We wish, that is, for a world where God is God and where everyone lives by the Ten Commandments. Such a world sounds idyllic, and we smile and continue cynically and despairingly in the world as it is. We forget that much of the matter is really very simple. It's important to remember that the Ten Commandments are a gift, God's gift to us. It's also important to remember that we're going to mess up. We're going to break these commandments. There's a TV show called Seinfeld, and when I was in seminary, someone used one of the episodes of Seinfeld, I guess that's what, 30 years ago now that that show was on, took one episode and said, let's count how many commandments are broken in this episode. And I think they found like eight or nine commandments were broken. The commandments are not going to be kept perfectly. God is not counting how many times we break commandments. God is not saying these commandments are required for you to be in a covenant with me. No. God is saying, I am in a covenant with you. We are in relationship. I am your God. You don't have any other gods. And here is a gift for you. Love these commandments. Think on these commandments. Understand these commandments. We have a hard time with that, and God knows we have a hard time with that. And we cannot beat ourselves up every time we make a mistake, thinking, oh, I have the commandments, I have these rules, I have these laws, and I keep messing up. That's not the point. It is a gift that is given to us, along with another gift, which is freedom. God says, I have set you free. God says, you are free. This gift is a free gift to you. My grace is an unmerited gift to you that will not be taken away. We can mess up and we can lose our freedom. We can make mistakes that end up hurting ourselves and hurting the people around us, but God is not counting how many mistakes we make. God is giving us these commandments as a gift for us to protect our freedom. We won't do it all the time. Maybe we won't do it most of the time, but the more we understand it, as a gift, and the less we think of it as a burden, the easier it will be. And the more we trust in God's love, not thinking that it's conditioned upon these commandments, the more we can rely on God's promises and feel the strength and love of God.
we offer our prayers by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to a gracious God who promises to hear and answer in steadfast love. Almighty God, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones to the COVID virus. We pray for outbreaks such as those in South America, Japan, India, and Michigan. More than ever, we thank you, loving God, for healthcare workers and first responders. As we pray for all working in essential jobs, help us to hear and support them. Remind us that caring for those in need is your work, in our hands, God of love. Christ of the cross, we pray for the hungry, the homeless, and the lonely. Keep us mindful of the places of natural disaster and human destruction. We pray for people in war-torn countries, victims of terrorism and refugees. We pray for all who struggle with addiction or family strife. We pray for those who are searching loved ones in Miami-Dade, Florida. Holy Lord Jesus, the stranger among us, we pray for the misunderstood and marginalized. Help us to be present with all in need and to be aware of all our own needs and to find safe spaces and supportive relationships. God of justice. Here. May peace ring out in our hearts and in our homes by your grace, O oh God. May mercy and forgiveness reign in every community. May war cease and hunger end. We lift up Marek, Mary, Dennis, Pam, Lionel, Santa, Rachel, Bill and Fran, Dorothy, Carol and Dan, Dennis, Erica, Phil, Jamie, Emmett, Linda, Anna, Muriel, Judy, Pat, Tim, Bob and Suzanne, Kay, Johnny, Carlene, Paul, Michael, Marge, Tessa, Linda, Sandy, Art, Deborah, Susie, David, the family of Beatrice, God of hope, hear our prayer. God of care, you created us in your image. We are but your beloved children. Too often, your hate, our hate and discrimination leads to violence and destruction. As a nation, we mourn the hate that resulted in mass shootings at a store in El Paso, a nightclub in Orlando. We mourn attacks on places of worship such as Emmanuel AME and Tree of Life. We condemn attacks targeting Asians, especially the shootings in Atlanta. Open our eyes to the sin of racism as it does daily harm and fractures our relationships. Help us repent and begin to repair the damage and to be your ministers of reconciliation. God of justice, hear our prayer. God, our creator, bless all who mourn the loss of loved ones, including the family of Tara and Eric and Bruce. Bless those celebrating birthdays, including Casey, and Russell, and Andrew, and Elaine, and Lauren, and Wendy. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Mother in God, receive these prayers and the prayers of our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you want to do the offer now? We certainly continue to offer our gratitude for all who have continued to be supportive of this church through tithes and offerings uh, throughout the times of separation. And as you can see in your bulletins, there are additional ways to uh, supporting the church, uh, which uh, we have used. You can use Venmo.com or the Venmo app on your smartphone, and you can enter at St. Paul's hyphen Rybrook. And if you were asked uh, for the last four digits, uh, they are 0804. You can use credit or debit cards. You can find the link in your weekly email or the church webpage, or use the uh, QR code that's here on the upper, on the upper right uh, in your bulletins, and you will find the uh, opening to do that. 
You can use your bank's quick pay with Zell. Tell them the name of the church in our email, St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, which is abbreviated at spelch at msn.com. Or you can mail it in, or you can instruct your bank to send a check of whatever amount and frequency you choose to the church address, 761 King Street, Rybrook, New York, 10573. Again, we are grateful for the loyal support of so many people during these difficult times and uh, wish God continued blessings on you. What is this? Peace. With. Becoming. Calm. It's peace. With. You. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed bright and salutary and a joyful and long overdue thing that we should always and everywhere offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Christ calls us to follow his humble way of service and love. Christ is the one who handed over to his death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, took bread, gave thanks, and giving the bread to them said, take and eat, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, taking the cup and giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It will be shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to serve you as your priestly people. We remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, and we give thanks for all the saints of blessed memory now celebrating this meal in the heavenly presence of their creator, sanctifier, and redeemer. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. You may be seated. The body of Christ given to me. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The 
Paris High School ini. Paris High School itu ya. Body size, can you see? Body size, can you see? Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you as you illumine our way through life. With the words of your Son, give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. To you be honor and glory forever. Amen. If you're able to stand for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in mercy and grant you peace. Amen. forth of the covenant God made with us in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Go and go in, in peace, or if you're still in your homes, Stay in peace, stay safe, stay connected. Thanks be to God. Hi, Chip. Hi, Patty. Hi, Laura. Tell Casey we said happy birthday. That's it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but we couldn't we couldn't figure out why we had those readings until he he gave that sermon, and boy. It, it, that was amazing. I was, we were like, what? <laughs> what is this? And then it was, yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> Chris McClure. That's true. I agree with you. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, wow. Yeah. It all comes together. With, yeah. With his sermon. Well, we're going to go uh, to the Cape next week. So uh, we're not going to see you guys until the uh, 11th. So peace and love, everybody. All right. Enjoy it. Thank right, you. Have a good vacation. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you, Happy everyone. birthday to Casey. Happy birthday, Casey. Oh, thank you. Hey, Kareem, we uh, love your Doris Day camera lighting. <laughs> Is that a special setting you have? I want that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, you know, Laura. Laura. Nice to see yeah. you guys. Casey's birthday is today, right? Yeah. Yes, and so is yours, right? Yeah, the yeah. same day. Yeah. You guys are birthday twins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Russ. <laughs> birthday. Oh, right. Thank you. Birthday. Thanks so much. Well, so what anniversary of 29 is this for you? Oh, <laughs> 58. <laughs>
Happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> Happy birthday. Stay right, cool, everyone. Take care. Bye. Take care. Love you. So the pure, the pure part. So it's like pure part. Yeah. So it's not that they're pure like. I hope you enjoyed this video, and you can always add a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you.